Welcome back to Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City on a 53-degree afternoon as we get ready for the Packers and the Chiefs. Mike McCarthy's Packers have not lost a game since last December 19th, one year ago tomorrow. And there is the interim head coach. Took over on Monday for Todd Haley, Romeo Cornell. Four seasons as head coach of the Cleveland Browns. The Packers at 13-0 with a win today. They will clinch home field advantage throughout the NFC playoffs. The Chiefs come in at 5-8, will be eliminated from playoff contention with a loss today. Very inconsistent season for the Kansas City Chiefs this year. Been on some long losing streaks, some long winning streaks, and back on another long losing streak. The Packers won the toss and deferred for the seventh time this season, so Mason Crosby gets things started. Javier Arenas will let the opening kickoff sail through the end zone. So the Kansas City Chiefs will start from their own 20-yard line. Tyler Palco started the last four games. Kyle Orton will make his first start with the Chiefs. He started five games for the Denver Broncos earlier this season, including one against Green Bay. And I think we're going to see the footprint or the thumbprint of what Romeo Cornell has put on this offense as a defensive coach. His background as a defense is going to be a certain style to this. I think we're going to see a little bit different approach today than what we've seen with Todd Haley up until this point in the season. Thomas Jones and Jones takes it out to the 22 yard line for a gain of two on first down and I think that that's what we're going to see quite a bit today is the running game by the Kansas City Chiefs you heard Tony talk about the clock they need to shorten this game and limit the opportunities of that Packer offense on the field critical for this group right here to be able to control the line of scrimmage run the ball effectively throw play action off of that and keep Aaron Rodgers off the field Second down, this is Leron McClain, the former Raven. And he is bottled up, met initially by D.J. Smith, the rookie out of Appalachian State, starting for the injured Desmond Bishop. Well, the Green Bay Packer defense took a big step last week against the Oakland Raiders of limiting the big plays. That's been their Achilles heel this season. When you talk about the rankings of defenses, it's based on yards. So the big plays have really hurt this defense. They're ranked 31st. They counter that by taking the ball away from the offense. Packers lead the league in both turnovers and interceptions without two starters on defense today. Ryan Pickett and Desmond Bishop. Third down and eight. Three wide receivers set for the Chiefs. Orton hit as he throws, and the catch is made for a first down by Terrence Copper. It's a nice job by Kyle Orton because he's got pressure right in his face. He's going to stand in the pocket. Charles Woodson comes off the left side. Eric Walden off the or next, actually Morgan Burnett off the right side. He hangs in there, throws, and it's a good job by Terrence Copper getting in and out of that route. Now remember, he's going to look right at that finger. Kyle Orton with a pretty, uh, pretty ugly looking dislocation a couple weeks ago against the Bears. The toss to Jones, and then he hands it off to Dexter McCluster. And the cluster dives out of bounds, forced out by Eric Walden at the 39 after a gain of eight. Tony, that's one thing yeah. that this Packers defense is going to have to be aware of. When you're Kansas City in this position, you've got nothing to lose, so they're going to be throwing all kinds of stuff at it. Yeah, especially off uh, early because they want to try and keep them off balance a little bit. You saw the reverse right there. they got to be ready for anything there on defense. Kyle Orton giving a little spark to this offense, though, guys. Second and two, here's Jones, and he picks up a first down before he is brought down by A.J. Hawk. A gain of six for the 12-year veteran, Thomas Jones, now with his fifth team, his second year as a member of the Chiefs. Yeah, and he's going to have to have a big afternoon today. He knows he's going to get a lot of opportunities. Romeo Cornell wants to run the football, and you know there was a... A really positive feeling with this group when we met with them on Friday. Obviously, you know, you know the Packers are coming to town. Everybody's talking about them in their undefeated season, but this was a pretty confident group. From the 45 on first down, the catch is made by Copper. 
That's his second catch, and he is in Packers territory. Gain of 10, another Chiefs first down. And we're seeing at the start of this game some things that I think Kansas City fans haven't seen. Guys making plays. You know, it's, it's been little things during the course of the season when these guys have lost games. Terrence Copper goes up, extends, but then watch right here. You know, just is just a smart play to stretch forward and get that first down. Terrence Copper only two receptions all season coming into the game. He has two on this drive. Jackie Battle in the backfield. Orton following the pump fake, looking Copper's way. Once again, Tremont Williams on the coverage. Little double move on the outside there, Darrell. Yeah, they, they saw something on film where they wanted to get Terrence Copper involved in the game. And we may see some guys slip here today because the field is uh, it's a little loose when you get outside the numbers. They've resodded it down the middle in between the numbers. Chiefs just two and four at home this season. Second and ten. 50, 50. Battle and McLean in the backfield. From the Packers 45, this is Jackie Battle. And he fights his way down to the 40-yard line. Gain of five. Battle over 500 yards on the ground this season. Chiefs lost Jamal Charles, pro bowler last year in game two. So they've gone running back by committee with Jones, McCluster, Battle, and McLean. They're working that clock. Exactly what Romeo Cornell right there wanted to do. Run the ball, control the clock, keep Aaron Rodgers off the field. And Deuce, this will be the ninth play of the drive for the Chiefs on third down and five. Another first down as Orton connects with McLean. Down to the Packers, 31, gain of nine yards. A simple bunch formation out to the right. Leron McLean runs the little arrow, finds that soft spot in the zone. And here is where it becomes critical for Kansas City. A against Green Bay, you can drive the ball between the 30s, between the 20s, take that time off the clock like we've been talking about. But now, now you have to you have to cash in. You've got to get points off your drives. And the Chiefs have not scored a touchdown on their opening drives this season. The only team in the NFL. The screen pass, and Jones takes it inside the 15, the 10, and is finally forced out of bounds by Charles Woodson at the Packers' four-yard line. Jones catches the screen pass and takes it 27 yards. Well, when you've got a defensive player that loves to bring pressure on the quarterback, you want to take advantage of that and get the screen right into his area. This is a well-designed play, called at the perfect time with the defense that Green Bay is running. He had a caravan of blockers out in front of him. I thought Thomas Jones was going to score on this one. There were no Packers on that side of the field. Yeah, nice job with that offensive line to sell and pass. And get downfield and get the blocks. Here's Jackie Battle. Battle down to the one. The Chiefs on their opening drive after the Packers deferred have gone 11 plays, 79 yards against this Green Bay defense that is ranked next to last in yards allowed this season, as you mentioned. It's so fun when you talk to coaches and players and you hear what their plan is for the game, but now you got to come out and execute it. And yeah, this is impressive to watch this Kansas City offense go down the field and do exactly what they said they had to against this Green Bay defense. Second and goal from the one, Orton to the end zone. And the pass was intended for Steve Breston. Looks like Steve Breston really wasn't prepared for this throw to come out as fast as Kyle Orton had it out there. Watch as soon as he turns it on his back shoulder a little bit, but uh, in a better position to get that one. Now third and goal from the one, McLean. In the backfield. Orton on third and goal, looking end zone. He throws, and the pass is off the hands of the Ron McLean with Morgan Burnett on the coverage. So the Chiefs, after driving 79 yards, forced to send out the field goal unit. Uh, that's the, uh, the only problem with this drive. The only thing they did wrong was not being able to convert. Again, it, it's another tough catch. You watch Leron McLean put in a good spot. He, he reaches, he catches the back end, he can't pull it in. And it shows you how critical when that screen came together to Thomas Jones, it really looked like he was going to be able to walk into the end zone. 
So not getting the touchdown on that play. Now you've got to settle for a field goal. It's a 19-yard attempt. Ryan suck up from the left hash. He has hit on his last 17 attempts. A chip shot. Suck up makes it 18 in a row. So the Chiefs drive 79 yards, but are held to three. TGIT. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Back in Kansas City, the Chiefs drive 14 plays, 79 yards. They take over six minutes off the clock, but are held to a field goal. Yeah, but it's a positive, and, and I think that was the big risk at the end of that drive is, hey, you know, we're still mathematically alive in the playoff hunt, but, you know, the way the season has been for the Chiefs, why wouldn't they go for it on fourth down there trying to score a touchdown? You've got to take something positive away from that. We talked about how critical points are when you play the Packers. Better to settle for that three. Randall Cobb on the return of the rookie out of Kentucky. And Cobb takes it out across the 25. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers offense when we return to Kansas City. Chiefs lead the Packers 3-0. Aaron Rodgers and his offense going to work from their own 26-yard line without their leading wide receiver, Greg Jennings. Rodgers' first pass to the outside, and the catch is made at the 31-yard line for a gain of five by Donald Driver. They may not have their leading wide receiver in Greg Jennings, but they've got a lot of weapons that they can still use. I think Jordy Nelson is a guy you have to keep an eye on. It's, it seems like he and Aaron Rodgers are building a really, really good chemistry. Here's one of the areas that Kansas City may be able to attack. This offensive line has been in flux all season long. Chad Clifton got hurt early on week five. They've been looking for that replacement out there. If you can do anything, maybe you can get some pressure on that offensive line. With two tight ends lined up in the backfield in front of Ryan Grant, the handoff goes to Grant, and he gains a couple. And I think Kansas City's approach will dictate what Green Bay does, but, you know, one of the things that Green Bay has to be concerned with, and it was one of the things that Mike McCarthy talked to us about, is Justin Houston and Tom Bahali. He thinks that they're very, very good edge rushers. He's going to be concerned about that. That is an area of concern for Green Bay, the, the offensive line and their protection, and it's going to be going up against the strength of this Kansas City front. Three wide receivers set, third down and three. Three down. Rodgers fires, and a diving attempt is made by Jermichael Finley, so the Packers go three and out on their opening possession. Michael Finley from the tight end position, he creates matchup problems. I think one of the things that Green Bay wanted to do was to see how are they going to cover Jermichael Finley. Will they just use a safety? Well, that time they had Travis Daniels, their nickel back on him. Tim Maste has the punt nearly blocked, and a flag is thrown as Maste was run into. Flag back at the 21-yard line. There's them penalties that we talked about earlier, Dow. The dumb ones, you can't have this. I know being aggressive, trying to block the punt, you want to do something good for your team, but you can't run into the kicker. Yeah, but Jeremy Horn does everything right except block the kick. He's there in plenty of time. He just uses an awful technique to block Personal it. foul. Roughing the kicker. Defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. I mean, he comes scot-free, Tony. He's right onto yeah. the punter, and he just uses a terrible terrible technique watch him come clean right there between the wing and the end yeah he should be aiming right at his foot not at his body you got to come across the front he only has one hand out you should have both hands out improve your odds a little bit and go after the ball not the person yeah exactly you have a block point you've watched it on film you've watched him in pregame you know where that ball is going to come off the foot of tim maste that is where you're going you're not going to the punter you're going to the block point and Jeremy Horn went to the punter and not the block point. So the Packers offense right back onto the field following the penalty. Grant and Coon in the backfield, first and 10 from the 48. The late handoff to Grant into Chiefs territory. 
Eight of five. Not only are the Packers without Greg Jennings today, Darrell, but their second and third string running backs, James Starks and Brandon Sane, both out with injuries. Yeah, right now the Packers only have two running backs dressed for the game, John Kuhn and Ryan Grant. And, and John Kuhn will be your single back and do some different things. But uh, you know, Mike McCarthy told us, hey, this is this is as banged up as we've been all season. And at this time of year, you're in the month of December, you know, that, that's going to be the situation with a lot of teams around the league. Nelson in motion, second and five from the Chiefs, 47. Grant down to the 43-yard line, gain of four. Glenn Dorsey made the tackle, setting up third down and one. And this has been one of the areas during the course of the season that Green Bay's been back and forth a little bit. James Starks gets the season started. Ryan Grant coming off a good performance last week against the Oakland Raiders. He had a good performance earlier in the year against Chicago. So it has become a little bit of running back by committee for the Green Bay Packers during the course of the year. On third down and one, Grant picks up a first down to the Chiefs. 38, eight of five. And it's just good to see him back on the field being as productive as he's been when he's had the opportunities because he had a he had a pretty tough injury last year in that opening game of the season that he's had to come back from. I'll tell you what, this Kansas City's defense, a line has really given some good opportunities to Ryan Grant to run the ball. I mean, they're all just staying on the line of scrimmage. I don't see any penetration. That offensive line is doing a great job of, of hooking up on the guy and, and just moving him out of the way. And Ryan Grant's finding some huge holes on the line of scrimmage. Michael Finley split out wide to the right. Rodgers now looks left, and then he's down back at the 44-yard line. The ball came loose, and it is finally recovered back at the 47-yard line. And the officials will try to get to the bottom of the pile. And it looks like it's the left tackle, Marshall Newhouse, after the hit on Rodgers by Tom Bahali. Aaron Rodgers is one of the best in the business at making subtle moves in the pocket to still be able to get the ball thrown down the field. But on that one right there, he didn't realize Tom Bahali had gotten in behind him and was still a threat for the sack. Looks like that his knee was down before the ball was out. I don't know. Looks like it came out no. first, Goose. I tell you, they got lucky. You can see it right there. It had squirted between both of those offensive linemen. That's why they're up front blocking and not carrying the football. Ten sack of the season for Holly. There's a free play. Nope, nope. Play is blown dead. Movement prior to the snap. Encroachment. Defense. Number 92. Five yard penalty. Second down. Wallace Gilberry. Be interesting to see if uh, Aaron Rodgers goes over and has a talk with Gene Steratore and say, hey, you know what? In, in that situation, when I catch him on hard count, and they get a neutral zone infraction, you know, we want to get the ball down the field. We're going to take a shot down the field. So unless unless there's a yep. chance that I might get hurt, but let's, let's, <laughs> let us take that shot down the field. Scott Wells did a nice job of snapping the ball and let the official make the decision. If not, Aaron's going to throw that ball downfield. Like you said, Dallas going to have a free play. So second and 13 Woo! following the penalty. Rodgers over the middle. Ryan Grant, the intended receiver, Derek Johnson, on the coverage. They're doing a really, really good job in coverage right now. The Kansas City Chiefs have got everybody locked down, and that is not an easy task. This is a very, very talented, very, very deep group of skill players for the Green Bay Packers. And Aaron Rodgers has nowhere to go with the football. I'll tell you what, Tamba Ali is really taking advantage of Marshall Newhouse. Hey, he's really struggling, Marshall Newhouse. Trying to block that man right there. must get to the 28 for a first down third and 13 Rodgers looking for Jordy Nelson there is a flag Brandon Carr on the coverage and it looks like this one will go against Nelson The ruling on the field is an incomplete forward pass. We have pass interference offense, number 87, 
penalty is declined. Fourth down. There's the uh, end of the play right here. <laughs> that was a nice job. There, there's the incomplete, yeah. yeah. yeah incomplete. He did a great job with his feet, but he didn't have possession as he went to the ground. So Mike McCarthy sends out Mason Crosby to attempt a 59-yard field goal. We've seen some long ones this year. Crosby's career long is 58. No good from 59, and there is a flag. Are they going to get another chance? Chiefs may have had 12 men on the field. Defense, 12 men on the field. Five-yard penalty, replay fourth down. Now, when you talk about a team that's wow. struggling through a season, a lot of the times it's things that are within their control. And, and we're seeing a, a classic example of this right now from the Kansas City Chiefs. They have a great opening drive on offense. They have to settle for three points. They come back, they force a three and out, and then they rough the punter. And they give Green Bay the opportunity to get the ball back. Well, now they make another stand. They miss the field goal. And now they give him another chance. You saw Javier Arenas. He was back in the end zone waiting for a potential run back. And they had 11 men up at the line. This time they will drop Brandon Flowers back. It is a 54-yard attempt by Crosby. And it is wide to the right. Well, he's consistent, Crosby. Both of them to the right-hand side. He gets two shots at it, one from 59, then 54 following the penalty. Still 3-0 Chiefs. Here's Mason Crosby, who missed the 54-yard attempt moments ago, only his third missed field goal this season. And it sets up the Chiefs in excellent field position from their own 44. Off the play fake, Orton complete for a first down to Steve Preston in Packers territory, a 12-yard connection. And the reason that play works is because of the play action and the fake by Kyle Orton. It pulls all the linebackers up the field. He does a nice job of hiding the football, and it just creates this huge opening for Steve Preston to find on that intermediate level. What happens when you can't stop the run and they're gashing it a little bit? You've got to overplay that run. Chiefs drove 14 plays on their opening drive. Came away with three. Here's McCluster. McCluster gains three down to the 41-yard line. Eric Walden made the tackle. One of the other things they're going to do, you wouldn't be surprised to see these guys really take these play clocks down on every snap, too. We've talked about running the football, all the things that you can do to shorten this game. Another thing is Kyle Orton is going to have his eye on that play clock, not just concerned about the end of the half and situations like that, but every single snap. Let me take this play clock down as far as I can and burn this clock while we're, while we're rolling on offense. Second and seven. The slant caught Preston. Terrific second effort. Another Chiefs first down. Gain of eight as we check in with Kurt Menefee. Time for a game break. Kurt. Well, the Saints trying to get that number two seed in the NFC out to a lead in Minnesota. That four. Sixth touchdown in his last seven games. That one from Drew Brees gives him a 7-3 lead over the Vikings. Can he move some goose? Thanks, Kurt. Saints have won their last five. Chiefs on the move here in Kansas City. By 90! Leading the Packers 3-0. First and 10 from the Green Bay 33-yard line as Jones turns the corner. And it's down at the 30 after picking up three yards. Uh, Leonard Pope got away with a hold on that play. And, you know, it's, it's being run right where he's at, too. He's going to be your tight end here, number 45. Watch him on Clay Matthews as he goes inside. Clay Matthews does a nice job of trying to get yeah. it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to for Hollywood. Get, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm going I'm to take that back Reset. from Leonard. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's a heck of a sell. You got me on that one. <laughs> Good thing you don't have a yellow flag in your pocket. I just threw it. <laughs> 
Brown, second and seven off the play fake. The screen to McLean, and McLean has a Kansas City Chiefs first down. Inside the 20, down to the 17-yard line, he gains 13. Well, this is the second big screen we've seen from Kansas City. Watch LaRon McLean this time come to the outside. Sets on 93, spins out. There's 44 right there. Brandon Albert out in front. They're doing a really nice job of setting it up. Brandon Albert did a great job of not going and giving any kind of idea to that defense that it was going to be a screen and then just sliding right out. By 90! The Chiefs have already picked up eight first downs here in the first quarter. Jackie Battle up the middle. Down to the 13-yard line, a gain of four. Well, you guys both talked about keeping the Green Bay offense off the field, and the Chiefs have been able to do that so far. Chiefs have had the ball for nearly 10 minutes in this first quarter. And now the big thing is they've got to cash in and get the points on that opening drive. A very impressive opening drive to start this game. Got down inside the five-yard line with a first down. Had to settle for three. They've got to punch this one in for a touchdown. They're working that clock, too. 25 to the second left in that first quarter. Second down and six. Gordon's pass broken up by Tremont Williams. It was intended for the rookie out of pitch, Jonathan Baldwin. You talk about a guy getting his first start and then a rookie wide receiver. This is a play that develops over time, this back shoulder fade, and Tremont Williams plays it perfect. Gets his eyes back on the quarterback. How many times do we see the defender not getting his eyes back on the quarterback? That's one of the reasons that the quarterbacks today are so successful in completing that pass on that back shoulder. Third down and six. Orton fires, and that pass was behind the intended receiver, Dwayne Bowe. So once again, the Chiefs will send out the field goal unit. That's just, it, it's, <laughs> you know, you, you got to be a little bit happy because you're moving the ball and you're doing some things. You're scoring some points, but you've been struggling the last couple of games. But, boy, you, you just can't feel good right now. I mean, you've controlled this entire first quarter. There's 15 seconds left, and you're, you, you may have a 6 nothing lead here. But against Green Bay, that's, that's one play away. One quick play, too. 32-yard attempt, suck-up hit from 19 earlier from the left hash. 6-0 Kansas City. Flavor. Green Bay Packers averaging 36 points a game. Have not scored yet today with 11 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Coming into this game, Packers have scored in 45 out of 52 quarters. They've only been shut out in seven quarters this season. Well, they did their off-season study, and Mike McCarthy looked at everything and said, you know what, we need to we need to score more points. Well, they've done a tremendous job of accomplishing something they saw in the off-season and improving in that area. And, and it helps everything. I mean, your defense can play more aggressive because they know the offense has the firepower to get back in. So it's a great dynamic to have for a team because it spreads throughout everything, not just the offense, but the defense and special teams as well. Mike McCarthy told us our only goal offensively to lead the league in scoring the game with a plan but then you still have to go out and execute it Kansas City does a pretty good job in that first quarter you look at the ball control right there as we have 11 seconds left here in the first quarter you gotta start getting sevens instead of threes though Rodgers out of the shotgun first and ten from the 20 yard line pass intended for Jordy Nelson and there is a flag and they brought some pressure on Aaron Rodgers right up the middle. Looks like offensive pass interference goes for the second time on Nelson. This must be something that Romeo Cornell saw on film. Yeah, definitely. Pass interference. Offense number 87. 10-yard penalty. Replay. First down. You know, the head coaches will see stuff, and they will go to the officials before the game and say, hey, can you watch 87 on the outside? You know, he's, he's given a little bit of hand. Now, that's the second one we've seen called, and I, I really haven't seen a whole lot there. It doesn't seem like that Jordy Nelson is pushing to create that separation at the end. It's more like he's got his hands up to regain his balance. And he's not too happy himself. Look at that. Well, they got to adjust because the officials are looking for him. That's, that's two in the first quarter. How many times do you see that? Better do some better blocking up front because Aaron Rodgers got 
Bad hit of that last one right in the mouth. Now Rodgers rolling right, throws off the hands of Jermichael Finley with two seconds remaining in quarter number one. They have just been a little bit out of sync here in the first Bobby. quarter. And we talked about it at the top, just come out and do what you do. And right now, they are not doing what they do. I mean, we usually don't see the Green Bay Packers with drops and the things that we've seen here in the first quarter. They're very efficient offensively. We talk about their explosive capabilities, but they're also very efficient. Three wide receivers, Seth Finley in the slot. Second down and 20 as Rodgers steps up. And the pass is caught and taken up to the... 23-yard line for a gain of 13 by Randall Cobb. But the Green Bay Packers have been shut out in a quarter for only the eighth time this season. They trail the Chiefs 6-0 after one. Green Bay Packers have won 19 consecutive games. They trail the Chiefs as we start the second quarter. 6-0. Third down and seven. Packers must get to the 30 for first down. Rodgers steps up and throws. And the catch is made for a first down. Out of the 40-yard line by Randall Cobb. A 17-yard pass play. Boy, that is a heck of a throw by Aaron Rodgers right now. Now they're trying to jump in, get into a little bit of an up-tempo offense right here because they have been out of sync throughout this first quarter. See if they jump into the no huddle, maybe change that. First and 10 Green Bay from the Packers 39 yard line. It's a little more strain on the defense too, with communication to try to get lined up. Rodgers just two of six in the first quarter. Packers have the ball for under five minutes. From the 39 yard line, inside handoff to Grant. And Ryan Grant gains four after the 43. The rookie out of Georgia, Justin Houston, made the tackle. It was kind of funny, you know, talking to Aaron and, and Mike McCarthy yesterday. You know, you ask, you know, why is he having such a good season? And he, he said, you know what, I've, I've given Aaron a little bit more control at the line of scrimmage. He probably has the most he's ever had during his career here with us. And you know, Aaron was reminded that he's got a lot of control, but he did say he had a little bit more. Now second and six. Quick release and another drop by Finley. Now this is why they go in the no huddle because they've been together so long. Finley, Aaron Rodgers, they know where each other's going to be. And this is a this is a basic play right here. Just a little out. The ball is going to be there. He just has to make the catch. And that gives a little bit more tempo to an offense when they get into a no huddle situation like this. Third down and six. Shotgun Rodgers on third down throws and the catch is made for a first down by James Jones into Chiefs territory a gain of 10. And there's another one of those guys Tony that's that's been together yep. with Aaron Rodgers for a while and, and I agree with you there, there's certain things that they do they play together for so long when you talk about James Jones and Jordy Nelson and Jermichael Finley that sometimes they do things that you can't cover as a defense. Rodgers under pressure from Holly once again. Baba Holly now. Wow, he is really coming. I'll tell you what, he's going against Marshall Newhouse. He's really putting a lot of pressure on Aaron Rodgers. He feels him every play. 14 and a half sacks for Holly last season. 10 this year, including one of the first quarter. Three receivers set, second down and 10 from the Chiefs, 49. Off the fake handoff to Grant. Rodgers moving to his right. Now he throws downfield, and Finley attempts to make a diving catch, and it deflects off his hands with Sammy Piscatelli on the coverage. Uh, I'm surprised that Jermichael Finley wasn't more wide open on that. What a great play fake to Ryan Grant to start this play on the play action. And then a heck of a throw by Aaron Rodgers on the move. But, I mean, everybody bites on this fake. A couple guys were still chasing Ryan Grant as he came through. Aaron Rodgers makes a great throw while he's scrambling out to his right also. 
It's a game of inches. Yeah. Third down and ten. Packers must get to the 39. Driver unable to make the catch. I don't remember seeing this many drop balls by the Packers over the course of, of two games, let alone in one half. That Donald Driver who dropped that ball. How many times? Take a pitcher, man. Yeah. Never, you won't see that very often. Haste punted from his own 40-yard line. Arenas will let it bounce. So the Kansas City Chiefs, who lead 6-0, will take over. A number of uncharacteristic drops by the Packers in this first half. Back in Kansas City, Kenny Albert, Daryl Johnston, Tony Saragusa, Aaron Rodgers, and the Packers trailing the Chiefs 6-0. Kansas City with two long drives. Settling for field goals on each of their first two positions. Thomas Jones, game six, out to the 21. Kyle Orton making his first start. Tyler Palco started the last four games. Of course, it was Matt Castle starting the first nine until he suffered a hand injury. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those situations uh, where when you lose your quarterbacks, there's Matt Castle right there. Tyler Palco was uh, the gentleman on the sideline prior to that. It, it just had such a huge impact on your offense, really on your whole team. Off the play fake on second and four. Orton's pass is caught for a first down by Dwayne Bow. 15 yards, Bo's first catch today. I'll tell you what, Darryl, you talked about it earlier, the play action that Kyle Lorton has is unbelievable. You see Bo outside there, everyone's biting on that run. He comes back on a nice, easy comeback route. What Kyle Lorton is on today, huh? He really is, he's playing well. That run game sets everything up with that play action. Once again, and the pass is caught by the veteran tight end, Anthony Becht. Charles Woods in the tackle. Time for a game break. Take it away, Kurt Menefee. Well, against the Giants, bad. Rex Grossman threw two interceptions on the first three possessions. Here's good Rex. Looking up with Santana Moss. 20-yard touchdown, and the Redskins have the lead at the Giants. 10-0. Kenny Moose and Bills. Huge game for the Giants following the win by the Cowboys in Tampa last night. Yeah, you worry about that letdown after that great win last week down in Dallas. On second and six, Jones looks to take it up the middle, but he is bottled up by Charlie Peprock. So a third down and five coming up for the Chiefs, who started the season by losing their first... Three games, then perfect during the month of October. You, you talk about teams that talk about inconsistency, but I mean this, this has been unbelievable when you look at the Chiefs' season. It has been so up and down. It's, it's been an all or nothing campaign for the Kansas City Chiefs this year. After winning the division and hosting the playoff game last year. Third down and five. Short moving to his right. Now he throws, and the catch is made for another first down by Dwayne Bow at the 47-yard line. The Chiefs needed five, and they gained seven. Dwayne Bow does a nice job. He's going to see Kyle Orton moving out to his right. He looks back. He moves the same way. He gets into that line of sight. You see him crossing right there. Good first half for Orton. He's brought a presence of a veteran 66 career starts prior to this one and he's completed 10 of 15 for 113 yards Yellow, 20. Alert, alert. 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 the 47 battle the midfield gain of three dj smith on the tackle but well, daryl you know kyle orton played against this team earlier in the season 
threw three touchdown passes, but a lot of turnovers in that game. I'll tell you what, it's really helped him seeing these guys earlier in the season coming out here today. He looks pretty confident. Yeah, I mean, he matched the three touchdown passes with three interceptions, and, and that's one thing that this, this Packer defense has done an excellent job in all season long. They lead the league in interceptions and takeaways. That game was at Lambeau back in early October. Packers won 49-23. Walked through for 273. And the three touchdowns. He sets up the screen to Battle. And Jackie Battle is close to another Chiefs first down. Seven-yard pass play. As Orton has completed passes to seven different receivers. And this is not easy to do. This is the third screen we've seen, and it's been very effective for Kansas City. But you have to have all the pieces of the screen working in conjunction. There's been great patience by every guy who has run the screen. That's the third person we've seen. That was Jackie Battle. We saw LaRon McClain. We saw Thomas Jones. All three of the running backs. Excellent patience to the point. The offensive line releasing, getting downfield, and throwing some blocks. Chiefs have doubled the Packers in time of possession. The handoff to Battle. Makes it up the middle down to the 40-yard line. For a gain of three as we approach eight minutes remaining second quarter. The formula has worked to perfection for Romeo Cornell aside from the end result of the first two drives. Field goals, not touchdowns. The only disappointment that Romeo Cornell can have right now is, is they haven't gotten a touchdown of, of either one of their scoring opportunities. But one of the things they're doing very, very well today is they're being very, very good on first down. They're not having negative plays. They're not getting stuck in second and nine, second and ten, or second and ten plus. They're getting positive yards, staying ahead of the chains on second down. Nice play of the drive for the Chiefs. As Orton throws, and it's caught by Poe. His third reception of this drive, and all three have gone for first downs. Gain of 15. Another great double move on the outside by Dwayne Bow, but good position because he's got safety help over the top. Watch Charles Woodson jump the early one, but he can do that because he's got safety help with Charlie Pepper over the top. So this is a nice throw by Kyle Orton because you've got that small window in between corner and safety to fit that ball. is tackled back in the 26 so after all that a loss of a yard so much for being good on first down <laughs> yeah that went out the window <laughs> that was the first negative play of the game for the Chiefs offense yeah, they, they've been they've been very efficient and that's what you have to do they're doing a good job though offensively of mixing it up with the screens you know the run game sets everything up obviously but uh, they are moving the change. I like the way they're calling this game right now. Orton has now completed his last six as Preston picks up another Chiefs first down. A.J. Hawk finally brings him down. Steve Preston games 14. Not only changing the plays, Tony, but changing the tempo at the line of screen. Watch how quick this one comes out. It's going to come out to Steve Preston right down here on the bottom. Jonathan Baldwin next to him. He's going to go in downfield, get the block that allows Steve Preston to get inside, but whether it's changing the plays with screens and ends around, end rounds and power run, that time it was just a change of pace by going on that quick snap. Third trip into the red zone for the Chiefs. They have not scored a red zone touchdown in their last four games coming into this one. Jones still on his feet and is finally tackled by Woodson at the three yard line. Thomas Jones excited, he gains nine. Let me tell you, that's the one thing you have to guard against. When you play at Arrowhead Stadium, the last thing you want is for this crowd to get into the game. And right now, Green Bay has done nothing to take them out. You see Thomas Jones at the end of this run. He wants to get this crowd into it because this is a very, very difficult stadium to play in. Second down and one from the three, and Orton calls timeout. With just under five minutes remaining in the first half, it's the Chiefs leading 6 0. Kansas City Chiefs leading the Green Bay Packers 6 0. Second down and one for the Chiefs from the Green Bay three. Battle tripped up 
Lose the yard. I tell you what, this guy can do just about anything that you ask him to do on the defensive side of the ball. Great He's job great at coverage. He's a great blitzer. And here he is on run support. And it looks like Jackie Battle's going to have a shot to get to the pylon. And he just knifes through and gets him tripped up. Recognize that play, I think, before the offense knew where it was going. This is an all-around player. Now, this is a huge third down right here. And he cannot settle for another field goal. Rodney Hudson in as an extra blocker for the Chiefs. Here's Jones. And he looks to be short. All right, Darrell. What do you think? Gotta go. In the beginning of the game, when you're trying to implement this plan, I agree with the decisions to kick the field goal on the opening drive. Here, go I think you gotta go. I think now is when you send that message that you wanted to send, Tony. Yep, yep. Looks like Romeo Cornell. Leaves his offense on the field, fourth and inches from just outside the two. Battle in the backfield with McLean. On fourth and inches, it's Jackie Battle. And it looks like he is stopped on fourth down. Boy, did B.J. Raji do a great job. Penetrating. Wow. You overload the left side. You want to run the ball left, and you want to get out on the perimeter. But B.J. Raji, nice through, and forces the play back inside. Three trips to the red zone for the Chiefs. Only six points. so frustrating for these Chiefs to be down in this red zone and only have six points. John Kuhn on first down. Let's, let's go back and take a look. And first, we'll show you the play design, what they wanted to do. They've got four big bodies here. you got Anthony Beck there as well. Here's B.J. Raji right here. And you want to get out to the perimeter, but it's because of B.J. Raji that Jackie Battle has to go back inside. You don't have the blocking potential on the back side of this play, and then it's just the entire Green Bay defense closing down and stopping that play short. That's exactly what B.J. Raji is supposed to do. Penetrate, force the runner back inside to your linebackers, and make him make his cut early. That was a perfect play on Green Bay's today. Rodgers on second and down, second and ten, throwing from the end zone. Donald Driver, the intended receiver, Brandon Carr, on the coverage. And you have to uh, have to appreciate the coverage that Kansas City is doing right now defensively. Now, this is a very talented group of wide receivers. Even without Greg Jennings in the lineup, this is still a very, very good group of wide receivers. And this Chiefs secondary is doing an outstanding job with coverage. Packers only 56 yards on offense. Four straight incompletions for Rodgers. Rodgers on third and ten from the end zone. And the pass intended for Nelson. It's Carr on the coverage once again. Another flag. Looks like we might have a timeout. Looks like Kansas City might have got a timeout before that play went off. Prior to the play, we have a timeout called by Kansas City. Would the game clock operator please reset the game clock to two minutes, 43 seconds. 2.40, 2.40 on the play clock, thank you. 2.40, that will be Kansas City's second charge timeout. Back in a moment. Let's clean up a little bit of stuff here. That timeout was called by Kansas City because they have 12 men on the field. There was a flag thrown on that play, but they got the timeout before the ball was snapped. So Kansas City having some issues with their personnel. The wide, the uh, the play on the outside with Jordy Nelson, it was not an interception. The ball was dropped there, so that's irrelevant at that time. But we're coming back from a timeout, and Kansas City had to adjust again to get another okay. guy off the field because they had 12. 
They're yeah. trying to do whatever they can to beat this Green Bay team with 11 or even 12 guys. Chiefs have 12 men in the defensive huddle, and then Jaleel Brown sprints it off the field seconds ago. Third down and 10. Rodgers from the end zone complete to James Jones. And Jones brought down at the 12-yard line. A yard shy of a first down. So the Packers forced to punt once again as we approach two minutes remaining in this first half. Packers have not been shut out in an entire first half all season. In fact, they have scored in the second quarter in every game this year. What a punt by Maste. Bounces inside the 20-yard line and will be down at the 17 by Jared Bush. As we hit the two-minute warning, Kansas City Chiefs with a 6-0 lead over the unbeaten defending champion, Green Bay Packers. Let us serve you. Last time the Packers were shut out over the course of an entire first half, the regular season finale last year. They beat the Bears 10-3, but scored all 10 points after halftime. Timeout is taken by the Packers. They're first. Well, the game plan today for the Chiefs was to come out and control the clock with a running game and play action and not allow Aaron Rodgers and this offense on the field. And you can see what they've done there. Now, the issue is, of course, the fact that they're settling for field goals and got stopped on fourth down. So there, there's still some things they have to correct. But, I mean, you can talk about it all week and plan it all week, but to come out and execute it as well as they have up until the point where you're getting into the scoring uh, has been pretty impressive. But, you know, when you talk about Green Bay, You've come out, you have not played well here in the first half, but you're, you're one play away. And that's the frustrating thing for the Kansas City Chiefs right now. As well as they've played, they have not taken advantage of their opportunity. Second down and nine, the cluster. Tackled by Burnett at the 22-yard line. By the way, that punt by Maste prior to the two-minute warning, career best 71 yards. So now the Chiefs facing a third down and five. With a minute and a half remaining in this second quarter. Chiefs are taking their time offensively to get that clock down to minimal time. Just in case they go and don't make this third and five right here, put the ball back in Aaron Rodgers' hands. Packers, as you see on our Fox box, upper left-hand corner with two timeouts. Or on third and five, a cluster across the 25 and then he is tackled by Eric Walden and the Packers will use their second time out so the Chiefs will punt with 58 seconds remaining but first a preview of the visa halftime report all right coming up on the visa halftime report we'll have scores and highlights from a festive week 15 in the National Football League including maybe the Indianapolis Colts getting an early Christmas present, maybe that first win. We'll talk about it in the Visa Halftime. Now back to you. All right, thanks very much, Kurt. Colts in action hosting Tennessee. I like the clock management right there by Mike McCarthy. You, know, you, you wait and see what they're going to do on third down. Maybe they throw it in complete. They do the screen. You've got two timeouts. You hit it real quick. You keep one in your pocket for your offense here in this hurry-up situation. You think Dustin Colquitt would have ever imagined that he would not punt for the first time until a minute remaining in the second quarter? Randall Cobb back at the 20. There is a flag. As Cobb is tackled after a seven-yard return by Jeremy Horn. Looks like it's going to be on Green Bay. That's not good. Move them back. Fifty-four yard punt. Holding. Return team number 24. Ten-yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down, Green Bay. Garrett Bush, the guilty Packer. Working on the outside against Jeremy Horn. A little bit of face mask, a little bit of everything right there. Don't 
didn't know that there's a guy specifically watching him. <laughs> to get away with that inside on the, on the line of scrimmage a little bit, Daryl, once in a while. But outside, those guys, are, you know, there's a camera right on him. And official looking right at him. You can't get away with that kind of stuff. So the Packers with 47 seconds on the clock and one timeout. Following the penalty will start at their own nine-yard line. Ryan Grant. Grant out to the 27-yard line. He gains 18. Packers hurry up to the line. And Rodgers will spike it. Stops the clock with 32 seconds remaining. That's something that Kansas City could not let happen. A big play like that on your first down. Maybe Green Bay's thinking about, you know what, we're back up inside our 10. Maybe we won't jump in the hurry up. But you're going to go to your first play and see what happens. Kansas City lets up a big run. Now all of a sudden your whole thinking shifts. Now you're going to have to hold, uh, hold this Green Bay offense through to the end of the half. From the 27 on second down. Rodgers' pass is caught out of the 34-yard line by Randall Cobb. Gate of seven, third down and two. Under 20 seconds, Packers with one timeout. Pass intended for James Jones, 13 seconds remaining. It will be fourth down. Sometimes we get caught up in the scenario of, of the two-minute situation, did you see that ball go right through James Jones' his hands, didn't get his head around. Yeah, he didn't even think he was getting the ball. His hands were down on his side. The ball was hitting on the yards air from Arena. And the Chiefs again having problems getting the correct personnel out prior to this punt. Trying to balance themselves out, Kenny. They only had 10 out there that time, so for all the times they've had 12, they're just trying to get that one back. <laughs> they're averaging Jesus. 11. Use their final timeout. Well, the College Bowl Guide is the best app available to keep you up to date on every College Bowl game this season. With exclusive videos, previews, interviews, scores, highlights, and game analysis, you won't miss a second of the action, no matter where you are. And the best part about it, it's free on the App Store. Download the College Bowl Guide now. Brought to you by The Daily and Fox Sports. The biggest challenge for Kansas City today has been getting the right number of guys <laughs> on the field. And there you go. <laughs> a couple of times. We got too, a, we too got a many. guy back there. Yep. Do we, That's time, all not crew right there. <laughs> these are fun to play with these telescopes. They got 11, Daryl? I mean, it's, it's going to be the emphasis in practice this week is to make sure we can get 11 guys on the field. Guys. Not 12, not 10. Another terrific punt by Maste, taking out the 11 by Arenas. Nine-yard return out to the 20. With one second on the clock, a 54-yard punt by Maste. Boy, how much would Romeo Cornell love to end this 19-game winning streak? The only longer streak in NFL history. The New England Patriots won 21 consecutive games over the 2003 and 2004 seasons, Cornell was their defensive coordinator. He wouldn't have motivation because of that, would he, Kenny? <laughs> I tell you, it's impressive. You know, you never know what's going to happen when you have change during the course of the season. Mike McCarthy, he, you know, he said he knew they were going to get their best effort today. And I tell you what, it's it's a good first half by Kansas City, just not scoring enough points. This Packers trail up the half for the fourth time this season. The Visa halftime report is next. in Kansas City where the Chiefs lead the Packers 6 nothing. Kenny Albert with Daryl Johnston. Green Bay Packers lead the league in scoring, lead the league in touchdowns, shut out 
in the first half for the first time this season. Well, at the beginning of the broadcast, we talked about Green Bay just doing what they do, and in the first half, they didn't do what they do. Uh, you know, we had drop passes. They looked out of sync, inefficient. The great thing about Green Bay is there's so much confidence with this team that in the locker room at halftime, hey, we're fine. Did we play well in the first half? Absolutely not. Let's get back out there in the second half and get back at what we're doing that we've done all season long. Now, Kansas City, that would be the interesting thing. I would have loved to have been in that locker room to hear what Romeo Cornell had to say about them because they came out and did everything he asked them to do except finish the drives. And I think Howie made a great point. The change to Kyle Orton that Romeo Cornell felt was necessary, the first thing he did really gave these guys a shot of confidence. And, and just that change helped them out in the first half to play the way they did. Follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. Remember, the Packers won the opening coin toss. They deferred, so Green Bay will get the ball first here in the second half. Randall Cobb takes it out. And he is tackled at the 12-yard line by Jaleel Brown. So the Packers will start deep in their own territory. Goose, you had a chance to catch up with Packers head coach Mike McCarthy. Yeah, Mike McCarthy, you know, Daryl, you're exactly right. He talked about fundamentals, about catching the ball, about tackling on defense. He said that was not us in the first half. We'll address it, we'll get better in the second half, and uh, we're not going to panic at all. So, uh, Daryl, you hit the nail right on the head. Aaron Rodgers, season lows in the first half, only six completions, 59 yards. Packers with only five first downs in the first half, and Grant picks up a first down on the first play from scrimmage here in the third quarter as he gains 13. Maybe we'll see Green Bay kind of emulate what Kansas City did there in the first half. Come out, let's establish this run again. Let our guys come off the ball a little bit. Let's see what Ryan Grant's got here in the second half running the football. Packers doing a great job of running through arm tackle through there in the last quarter. Direct snap to Randall Cobb on first and 10 from the 25-yard line. And Cobb gains four out to the 29 with Rodgers on the sidelines. I think you're reaching in the playbook a little bit too far down the Way far. catalog right there. I'd, I'd rather have Aaron Rodgers on the field. It's one of those things you get teams to think about, right, Goose? They've got to prepare for Yeah. And, you know, the next week will be like, all right, there's one play that eats up a little bit of practice time during the week, not like they had a lot. It wasn't like when we were playing, Darrell. He's regulated now. Second like down and six, here's Grant. Grant stopped just shy of the marker. Justin Houston made the tackle. Take a look at... Oh, boy, that would be tough. Brian Beluga, your right tackle, and the one area that Green Bay you know, has been doing some patchwork stuff this season is that offensive line. They've had a couple of different starting combinations, some guys in and out. Even last week, you know, having the opportunity, getting up on Oakland to take a look at Derek Sherrod and, you know, Evan Dietrich Smith moving into different positions just in case. But this would be a huge hit. Chad Clifton already down your left tackle, and now Brian Beluga down here. Keep your eye on 75 right there, working on Justin Houston. And Belaga missed two games earlier this season, weeks four and five with a knee injury. He is helped off and will be replaced at right tackle by the rookie first-round pick out of Mississippi State, Derek Sherrod. Having Brian Belaga, that, that's, that's big. Packers playing with a young tackle on the other side and Marshall Newhouse in his second season. And now the rookie, Sharon, in at right tackle. Third down and one. John Kuhn bottled up. Derek Johnson stopping Kuhn on third down. And they made a wall there on the line of scrimmage at Kansas City's defensive line. There was nowhere to run. Watch these guys going, holding everybody up. No chance at all. Derek Johnson did a great job of just coming through. And 
feed off of that. That was a short third and one, too. So Maste punting for the fourth consecutive possession. Had a career-long 71-yarder in the second quarter, and he forces Arenas all the way back to the six-yard line. Penalty marker is thrown as Arenas is forced out of bounds, and another flag comes out. 61-yard punt, 17 on the return. Dean's territory will sort out the two penalty markers. This is the other area that the Kansas City has made their mistakes in today. They've had some critical penalties during the course of the game this afternoon. And these special teams fouls, they're, they're, at, they're spot fouls. They're where the ball was caught, not at the end of the run. There are two fouls during the return. First is illegal block in the back, return team number 24. That penalty is declined. Also, there is a hold, number 40 of the return team. That will be half the distance to the goal. First down, Kansas City. Timeout. So Kyle Orton and the Chiefs on offense when we return. South. There's Brian Bulaga heading off to the Packers locker room. Bulaga with a knee injury. His return today is questionable. Kyle Orton and the Chiefs start from their own five-yard line. Orton, good first half, 14 of 19, 152 yards in his first start. As a member of the Kansas City Chiefs and Thomas Jones, gains four up to the nine-yard line. Now, but the big thing, good decision-making, no mistakes by Kyle Orton. And we've talked about his first time around earlier this year with the Denver Broncos against the Green Bay Packers. Had the three picks. You can see how many different guys he's working with during the course of that first half. Jim Zorn, Chiefs quarterback coach, former head coach of the Washington Redskins. Here's Jones again. Goes down to the 11-yard line, setting up third down and four. Charles Woodson makes his 11th tackle of today's game. Third down and three, the Chiefs 12-yard line. Chiefs have... And inside the red zone three times today, they've come away with two field goals and were stopped on a fourth and inches at the two-yard line. Looking to extend this drive. They're down at four. They must get to the 15, and they will not as Jarius Wynn makes the tackle. Thomas Jones loses two yards, and the Chiefs will punt it away. Well, they were waiting on this one. Jarius Wynn inside, fights off the block. Steps right into the running lane. Randall Cobb awaiting Dustin Colquitt's punt. Only his second punt today. Station back in the end zone. set up good field position for the Packers as Cobb falls forward fair catch at the 47 yard line Aaron Rodgers and the Packers offense 6-0 Chiefs Packers have scored points all season long especially in their previous three games against the AFC West it's a pretty impressive run against the division but uh, doesn't look like they're gonna match that today not, doesn't look oh. like they're gonna get into the 40s They've scored at least 42 points five times this season. They have scored at least 24 in every game. No points so far today. This is their best starting field position from their own 46. Grant to the outside, across midfield. And he is forced out of bounds by Derek Johnson after a gain of seven. Well, we, we've talked about Green Bay not looking in sync today, and, and whether it was Derek Johnson when we asked him what does Aaron Rodgers do best, or we're even talking to Aaron himself and saying, what, what do you think, what part of your game have you seen the greatest improvement from last year to this year? It was location of the ball. I mean, both guys said it. And it, when you think back on his season, he has been phenomenal with his placement, and that hasn't been the case today. It's the one area that, uh, that has really impacted their passing game. 
Second down and three. Play action. Rodgers throws, and the pass is short. Intended for Jordy Nelson. A great play, uh, play action right there. The guy's bit on it. That ball looked like it just died right there. Did you see that's what was coming out of his hand there? Yeah. I don't know if the wind affected it or what. I mean, if the wind's pretty windy. It is pretty windy down here, but I think it affected that much. Jordy Nelson without a catch today. Came in with 51. 957 yards on the season. Third down and three. Rodgers floats one up for Jermichael Finley who makes the catch. What an adjustment by Finley who dropped a couple in the first half. He makes a tremendous adjustment on this pass and gains 40 yards. Well, so much for the location being a little bit off today. Jermichael Finley working out of the bunch. This ball is lofted up, coming in, and it's in a great position. And as you pointed out, Kenny, a great adjustment by Jermichael Finley. Well, he dropped that one in. Biggest play for the Packers today, 40 yards. First and goal from the seven as the Packers empty the backfield. Rodgers moving to his right. Wrapped up by Holly, stays on his feet and then throws it into the tenth row. Somehow he got away from Tamba Holly and fired the put football into the stands behind the end zone. But I want you to watch what he does when he gets near contact in the pocket. Watch both hands come onto the ball right in here. He gets it down, secures it. Then as he spins out, he gets rid of it to avoid the sack. But the thing that impresses me about Aaron Rodgers is his feel in the pocket. He's got great subtle moves, whether it's a slide or a step up. He senses pressure coming from blind spots. Second goal from the seven empty backfield once again. Rodgers looking, moves to his left, looks right. Now will run, he's inside the five. And he is hit hard at the three by Derek Johnson. <laughs> Comes up smiling. He's telling he wants to be hit harder now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you gotta love that. Aaron Rodgers does a great job of scrambling, gets out to his left, looking for his receivers downfield. Kansas City has them all covered up. He decides to run, touch it like Darrell talks about ball control. You don't want to get tall and the point of contact, though, Tony. You want to no, you you get slide and get out of the way. And he he loves it, though. Stood on his toes. Four receivers set. Third and goal from the two. Rodgers to the end zone. Touchdown, Donald Driver. That's the scary thing about Green Bay. You can hold them at bay the whole first half, but they're so explosive. Donald Driver working out of the slot. Great release against Jaleel Brown. But you can never feel safe against this offense. Here's Crosby. It's the extra point. So the Packers who trail for the last 30 minutes, 52 seconds, have their first lead of the afternoon. Moments ago, 40th touchdown pass of the season for Aaron Rodgers. That is a new Packers franchise record. Brett Favre with 39 back in 1996. It shows you just how well he has been playing this season. Everybody talked about Aaron Rodgers, you know, making a move to become one of the elite quarterbacks in the NFL through the course of last season and then winning the championship and, and kind of joining that that group of Tom Brady and Peyton Manning and Drew Brees, and he has just ramped it up another level this season. It's just been outstanding. He joins Brady, Peyton Manning, Dan Marino, and Kurt Warner as the only quarterbacks in history to throw at least 40 in one season as the ball blows off the tee. Goose talked about the wind. Yeah, the wind has really picked up down here. If you look, the one end zone above that big giant jumbotron there, Kenny, the flags are stiff straight out. And, uh, I think it's affecting the ball a little bit. I think that Aaron Rodgers pass was affected by the wind. Saw so it shift a little bit. So it could be a concern here in a second. 
Third quarter. Yes, it is the third quarter, Goose. Sam Shields. Say second half there, Kenny. Sam Shields will assist Crosby. And took that ball, too. And the cluster will take it out. Next to the cluster. He is caught by the holder on the kickoff, Sam Shields, and there is a flag. 26 yards on the return. A lot of special team penalties on Kansas City During today. The return, holding, return team number 42. 10-yard penalty, first down, Kansas City. Sammy Piscatelli. Special teams coach Steve Hoffman. Now he's got to be frustrated. I mean, they've really put Kansas City in some bad field position to start the drives with these special teams penalties. Chiefs will start at their own 11-yard line. Mike McCarthy spent six years in Kansas City, his first NFL coaching job under Marty Schottenheimer with the Chiefs. And he told us yesterday, I know how hard it is to win in this stadium with these fans. And the Packers finally have their first lead of the day. Orton on first down to a wide open Leonard Polk. And the tight end takes it across midfield. A 39-yard pass play. Now, Orton had all day back there. Wow. Yeah, this was great, though, Tony, because you're running a, a double move at the top to Dwayne Bowe, and then Leonard Pope right here is going to sneak out the other side and just go straight up the field. They turn him completely loose down the seam. But it was a good job by Kyle Orton with the punt to the outside. Dwayne Bowe on a double move, then you come back to the opposite side of the field, and Leonard Pope is wide open down the seam. Biggest play on offense for the Chiefs today. 39 yards. Orton off the play fake. Going deep for Baldwin. And the rookie unable to hang on. Jonathan Baldwin with Morgan Burnett on the coverage. There's some great location wow. by Kyle Orton right there. There was an opportunity right there. Double coverage. Kyle Orton put in a spot where he could have got it. Morgan Burnett with a little bit of contact there right as he comes into the play. Jonathan Baldwin got his hands on it. Look at the location. Oh, you know, look at Tremont Williams. Great job swiping that ball out. 51! 51! Packers defensive line better find a pass rush somewhere. Second down and 10. Orton stands in the pocket, now goes to his right and throws wide open. It's Baldwin who picks up a Chiefs first down to the Green Bay 33 as Baldwin gains 17. I'll give that one to the offensive line because yes, Kyle Orton had all day to stand in that pocket. Was, was never even pressured at all. I mean, they just built a wall. There is no movement whatsoever. Get coverage of every NFL game on NFL Mobile. Call Star Star NFL now. New set of downs for the Chiefs who trail 7-6. From the Packers 33, it's Thomas Jones. Takes it down to the 28-yard line. Gain of five, DJ Smith, the tackle. I wouldn't have thought this coming into the game when you talk about Aaron Rodgers going up against Kyle Orton. He's only been here a couple of weeks, getting his first start, coming back from a dislocated finger. And he has outplayed Aaron Rodgers this afternoon. Aaron Rodgers has had some drops by his guys on the outside, but you can't take away from how well Kyle Orton has played in his first start for the Kansas City Chiefs. So you have one guy who's been named NFC Offensive Player of the Month in all three months so far this season. And the other... He has not started since week five. Penalty flag as Jones is tackled at the 25-yard line after a gain of three. Illegal shift. Offense. Two men moving without resetting. Five-yard penalty. Replay. Second down. A lot of things within the control of the Kansas City Chiefs when they're having these penalties. We, we saw them struggle in the first half with 12 players on the field. Illegal shift. I mean, that's that's basic stuff. They've got to clean 
the penalties up that are within their control and get rid of them here the remainder of the second half. Last week against the Jets, five penalties on one drive. Morton does a 360, looks to set up the screen to McClain, but it did not fool the Packers. Right, this is one of those plays where you're, you're going to do a screen and you're going to do the, the double move and spin out and you're trying to impact the defense. But watch, nobody moves. They're trying to get the screen to Ron McClain. Well, when you come out of that, you got to find him. And if, if the Packers haven't bitten on this, then just throw it into the ground. I mean, that you're, you're not giving LaRon McClain very much of a chance for a positive play right here. So you've got to get your eyes back onto your running back. See if, if, they, if you fooled Green Bay with the motion, the play action on that screen, and they did not on that play. Loss of four, now third and 14, and Orton calls timeout. Four and a half remaining, third quarter in Kansas City. Packers leading the Chiefs by one. Mike McCarthy and the Packers look to defend their Super Bowl title. Romeo Cornell with five rings as an assistant coach with the Giants and the Patriots. I was not aware of that either. That's a, that's a great run that Romeo Cornell with two very, very good teams. They're wondering if he was aware of all five of them today. There's Orton on third down at 14, complete to McClain. And Eric Walden has had an active game, able to make the tackle. So the Chiefs. You trail by a point, send out the field goal unit. Ryan Suckup hit two in the first quarter from 19 and 32 yards out. This is not going to be easy. That wind's going from right to left for him. See the ribbons on the top of the goalpost. This will be a 46-yard attempt as the Packers have some trouble with personnel. D.J. Smith scrambles out to the field. From 46 yards out, Suckup's kick is good. Despite the swirling winds, Chiefs go back on top. Now 9-7, Kansas City. Suckup today, three for three. In a hurry, they're going fast. Ryan Suckup with his third field goal today, a seven-play, 61-yard drive to keep playing. The 39-yard reception by that man, Leonard Pope, one of ten different receivers Orton has connected with today. And that was a nice response by the Kansas City Chiefs on that drive. You've been playing well all day. You've held Green Bay at bay. They come down, they take the lead at 7-6 after you've really controlled the game. And you come down and retake the lead. So, well done by Kansas City. Bob will bring it out. Cobb takes it across the 20. Time for another game break. Here's Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles. Kurt. Hey, this one's for Goose. Some defense. Big defensive end Red Bryant with a pick six for Seattle. They lead 21-14 in Chicago. And then look at this. Indianapolis's Jacob Lacey picks off the former Seahawks quarterback Matt Hasselbeck. He returns it for a score. Indy looking for that first win of the season. Leads it 17-6 in the third quarter over the Tennessee Titans. Kenny Moose and Goose. I was worried about Chicago today coming back from that heartbreaking loss to Denver and then all the stuff that's happened during the course of the week with Sam Hurd. Bears trailing the Seahawks by seven. Chiefs leading this game 9 7. First and 10 from the 22 yard line. Rodgers complete to Grant. Out of the 27 for a gain of five. Derek Johnson made the tackle. And I think we have to credit more the Kansas City Chiefs secondary than the fact that it's just Greg Jennings out of the lineup today because there is a tremendous amount of depth at the wide receiver spot for the Green Bay Packers along with Jermichael Finley, their tight end. It, it has been a great effort by all the guys in the secondary for Kansas City. Family only one reception. Driver has two and a touchdown. Jordy Nelson without a reception today. That is surprising. Second down and four. Rodgers steps up and picks up a first down and more. Finally slides. Smart move by Rodgers down at the 47-yard line as he scrambles for 19 yards. That was a smarter uh, ending to a run there. By <laughs> this is a pretty good vision, though, Goose. I mean, he looks like yeah. a running back here coming through. Some nice moves here. Did a nice job here at the end. 
Especially if you watch, he goes, he slides, and then when he gets up, he gets the... Look at that. That's the, uh, the secret spy move. Non-verbal communication <laughs> that Roger spoke about with us yesterday, both before and after plays. Two saying a message to you, Deuce. I'll be watching you. That's what that one was. Here's Grant. And he gains a yard wrapped up by Tyson Jackson and Glenn Dorsey. Two minutes remaining, third quarter. Packers find themselves in an unfamiliar position. Remember, they have never trailed in the fourth quarter during this entire 19-game winning streak, dating back to last December. They have not been behind in the fourth quarter. We are a minute 45 seconds away. That is unbelievable. What an impressive stat. to the Chiefs 41 gain of 12. That's a big target right there Darrell for Michael Finley. Watch this little route. He just knows he looks at Aaron Rodgers comes in. That, that's a big man right there. Good hands too because that was yeah. on the back hip a little bit. Nice job of staying on his feet not knowing where the first down marker is but getting it crossed. Territory is going to pump up the play clock as we take a look at Rogers' numbers in the first half and in his third quarter. New set of downs for the Packers from the Kansas City 41. Movement prior to the snap. All set. Offense number 78. Derek penalty, still first down. That's the rookie right tackle, Derek Sherrod, who is in for the injured Brian Balaga. Green Bay said that we're going to start the game allowing Marshall Newhouse, and now I'm sure it'll be the same with Derek Sherrod, to be in one-on-one -on -one situations because they take their guys, they spread the field. They're not going to have tight ends inside on the lineup and trying to protect their tackles on the edges. These guys are going to have to win their one-on-one -on -one battles. Play clock at two. First down and 15. Rogers steps up. And now he fires downfield looking for Jones. And it is intercepted in the end zone. If he got both feet down, he did not. Brandon Carr was bobbling and did not have possession. So it will be second down and 15. You can see right there he did not have possession as he got his feet down before he went out of bounds. Immediately, the official said he was juggling the football. And now Romeo Cornell has thrown the challenge flag. Remember, the first thing the officials are going to do is check the feet. There's, he doesn't even get the second foot down, so it doesn't even matter about possession. The city is challenging the ruling on the field of an incomplete pass. Timeout. Carr did not get that second foot down in bounds. Chiefs have challenged. Chiefs territory will take a look. No. Chiefs have challenged the last play. Did not look to us as if Carr got his second foot down in bounds. Here's Gene Steratore. After review, the ruling is confirmed. The defender's second foot lands out of bounds. Therefore, it was an incomplete pass. It will be Green Bay's ball second down. Kansas City will be charged with his second timeout. And again, you'll see the right foot go down. As Brandon Carr goes to get that left foot in, it goes out of bounds. Down in the white. And from this camera angle here, right there, you can see it. So it is now second down and 15 for the Packers. Four seconds remaining, third quarter. Rodgers dumps it off the screen to Grant. And Grant takes it to the 39. And that will take us to the end of the third quarter. So for the first time in their last 20 games, the Packers will trail 
in the fourth quarter. It's 9-7, Kansas City. Well, thousands of Packers fans have made the trip to Kansas City for the game today. Not sure they expected this. No, I, I don't think so. And uh, I, I'm still impressed by how many Packer fans have made the trip down here to Arrowhead. And usually when you come to Arrowhead, you don't see a lot of, of your fans in the stands. As we start the fourth quarter, it's the 5-8 and eight Chiefs who made a coaching change this week who lead the 13-0 Packers 9-7. Third down and eight for Green Bay. They must get to the 31 for a first down. As Rodgers' pass is incomplete. Piscatelli getting a piece of it. Finley, the intended receiver. One of the things that Kansas City has done on, on a regular basis today is made Aaron Rodgers feel uncomfortable in the pocket with only four guys pressing. The down the Packers. Will go for it on fourth down and eight from the 39. It's got to be either punting or attempting a 57 yard field goal. Rodgers on fourth down, steps up, throws to the outside, and Finley unable to make the catch. Savvy Piscatelli was going to have an opportunity for an interception on this one. I'll tell you, that ball floated. Take a look at Aaron Rodgers right here. Justin Houston goes, reaches in. You know what? The Chiefs are better off without the interception. Better yeah, field are. position. Good break, yeah. Kenny. Not that that was what went through Piscatelli's mind at the time. <laughs> no, he wanted it. <laughs> So the Chiefs with a 9-7 lead will take over at their own 39-yard line. Wayne Bow in motion. Off the play fake to Jones. Orton with loads of time. He throws. And it's Steve Preston who makes the catch in Packers territory. For a gain of 16 out of Kansas City Chiefs first down. Now Kyle Orton has been very good with his decisions today. Here's Steve Preston on the right side. They're running near routes. He's running the same thing that Dwayne Bowe is on the other side. Kyle Orton wanted to go to Dwayne Bowe, but he stumbled coming out of his break. You see him right there looking left and then adjust and comes back to the right side to hit Steve Preston. To another Chiefs first down. Howard Green was laying down there a little slow getting up. It's Green Bay's defensive line, the defensive general's got to be a little wore out. And the city's offense has been doing a great job of keeping him on the field for a long time. They look flat down here, this Green Bay defense, Darrell. The whole team has. Man, the whole team. You know, it's just waiting for a spark to see what happens. They're not getting the pass rush, you know. Like third longs. Play action is beaten. Leonard Polk wide open again. Uh, he stepped out before he got it inside the pylon. Four yards from Ort to Pope. Leonard Pope working from the traditional tight end spots, just going to run a corner route. Green Bay defense again gets caught up in play action, finds a great spot in that soft area in the coverage. So it's first and goal from inside the three. Remember, twice the Chiefs have been inside the three yard line once. Had to settle for a field goal from the one, 19-yard field goal, and then they were stopped on fourth down at the two. Good thing Leonard Pump stepped out of bounds. He might have had a chance of fumbling that ball into the end zone. Here's Thomas Jones, and he is hit for a loss. By the combination of D.J. Smith and A.J. Hawk. D.J. Smith's done a great job jumping in for Desmond Bishop at the inside linebacker spot.
Fourth trip into the red zone for the Chiefs. They have not scored a touchdown. Coming into this game, only three touchdowns in their last six games. They've been so good on first down. Not very many negative plays at all. And then your first opportunity down here inside the five, you have a negative play on first down. Now second and goal. Orton for the end zone. Intended for Baldwin with Sam Shields on the coverage. And that play you mentioned, Darrell, the Chiefs' third negative play at goal to go today. Wow. I, I guarantee you they don't have three negative plays in the field of play during the course of this game. As many as they've run. This, now, is, this is a huge snap. Third and goal from the five. Marker prior to the snap. It's a false start against the Chiefs. False start. Offense number 76. Five yard penalty. Third down. Left tackle, Brandon Albert. They've been really changing up that personnel, going with the ground game, the big guys. Now they're out again. Said they're going to spread them out on this one again. Bay's defense got to be thinking pass right here. Now you go from first and goal at the three to third and goal at the ten. Negative play now, penalty. Three wide receivers. Third and goal from the ten yard line for the Chiefs. Orton over the middle. What a tackle by Clay Matthews as he brings down Dexter McCluster at the two. And once again, the Chiefs will send out the field goal unit. And the fans here are not happy, but I like the decision. You went for it in the first half. In this situation, you didn't get it. You forfeited your points. You've got to make it a two-possession game. You know, you, you've got to think you're going to hold Green Bay to a field goal. I know they're explosive, but I like the decision by Romeo Cornell here. From 20 on the left hash. So it is now a five-point game, which means if you do hold the Packers to a field goal, it would be a two-possession game. 12-7 Chiefs. Four field goals for Ryan Suckup of the Chiefs today. Four trips to the red zone. Chiefs come away with three field goals. They were also stopped on the two. But they lead the Packers, who have won 19 consecutive games. 12-7 early in this fourth quarter. Nothing worse than seeing short field goals in the box score on Monday, Kenny. You see those 19, 20, 21 yard field goals. That means you were not you were not finishing your drives offensively and and deep on first down. I mean the, the opening drive of the game inside the five with a first and goal. That drive there inside the five with a first and goal. A Chiefs offense that has scored only 15 touchdowns all season. This is game number 14. They've averaged just over one touchdown per game. Aaron Rodgers and the unbeaten Packers trailing by five. Al Orton in his first start with the Chiefs. Leading the Packers 12-7. Probably talking about missed opportunities on the sideline. The Kansas City Chiefs today, 10 plays inside the five-yard line for a grand total of three yards. Wow. Chiefs have not been able to punch it into the end zone. They lead by five as Rodgers hands it off to Grant. Grant gains three out to the 23-yard line. The only touchdown for the Packers today, the two-yard pass from Rodgers to Donald Driver. In the third quarter, Rodgers' 40th touchdown pass of the season, breaking Brett Favre's single-season franchise record. A look at the Chiefs in the red zone today. 17 plays. They come away with three field goals. Now it's up to their defense once again. Against the Packers club that has scored at least 24 points in every game this season. They have seven today. Rodgers... Makes something out of nothing as he hits Grant for a first down. 
And Ryan Graham takes it all the way out to the 45-yard line for a gain of 21. Again, the presence that Aaron Rodgers has in the pocket and just subtle moves. His eyes are always down the field. You know, we've seen him run effectively, but look at him. He scans around. He checks where everybody is. And when he realizes he, have, he has time, he pops back up, gets downfield, and finds Ryan Grant. He does not feel comfortable in that pocket, though. This Kansas City defense line has brought some pressure. After a couple seconds, well, he's looking around to see if he's going to get hit. From the 45, play action on first down. Rodgers in trouble. He escapes from Holly once again and throws, and it's broken up. Beautiful play by Kendrick Lewis. Got another lineman down for the Green Bay Packers. Marshall Newhouse was up calling for the trainers to get out immediately. It's Derek Sherrod, the right tackle, who came in to replace Balaga. As Tom Bahali comes in for the sack, Derek Sherrod is engaged in his block and gets hit down in his lower leg. And Marshall Newhouse, right away when he saw it, he was calling for the Green Bay trainers to get out to the field. Here's Belaga, who injured his knee earlier. Kyle. Back in Kansas City, the medical staff tending to Packers rookie right tackle Derek Sherrod. The rookie out of Mississippi State injured on the last play. And Tom Bahali is going to be coming in. There's Tom Bahali, 91. Now, Derek Sherrod is 78. He's right here engaged with this block, and as he misses the sack, he collides with the lower leg, and they've they've got an air cast on it right now. And Marshall Newhouse, who was standing over him right there, number 94, immediately called for assistance from the sideline. So a, a patchwork offensive line coming into the game. Things have just gotten worse for the Green Bay Packers. Ryan Balaga on the sideline there, who's been out. Chad Clifton, who went out in week five, against the Atlanta Falcons with a hamstring, uh, a severe hamstring injury. Marshall Newhouse has been holding down his position at left tackle, so we're going to have some shifting and some moving right here. As Evan Dietrich Smith comes onto the field, we'll see where that sits. Does, does Josh sit and stay at, at uh, kick out to right tackle and Evan Dietrich Smith go into right guard? We'll sort that out when we start to play again, but uh, a concern for this group coming into the game has just gotten worse, especially with this injury here to Derek Sherrod. Obviously quite serious in nature. Sherrod wishing his teammates well. First round pick, 32nd overall out of Mississippi State. Who came into the game back in the second quarter for the injured Brian Bulaga. Who tough. hurt his knee. And tough, Kenny, because here's a player who's worked his way through you know, practice during the course of the season. The coaches felt he'd earned the right, you know, to get some some snaps on the on the field and played quite a bit last week against uh, against Oakland. And uh, you know, the coaches said, yeah, there's some things he's got to work on. But you know, we were we were pleased, you know, how he worked with the guys next to him at game speed. So you know, something that was very very positive after the game last week. Uh, unfortunately, looks like his season has come to an end here this afternoon in Kansas City. Balaga. Ryan Balaga went out with the knee injury, so hopefully, I mean, he's been back on the sideline. His return, yeah, but he's got his pads on. Yeah, yeah that's that's a, the, the return was questionable, yeah, Tony. But I know. Packers have one other active offensive lineman, Ray Dominguez, a rookie out of Arkansas. There's Dominguez. part about this game it, it's a physical game and you have injuries like that that just happen during the course of the game and again a, a guy who's worked the entire season to get better at his craft at the tackle position and, and played well last week 
against the Oakland Raiders. Unfortunately, his season will come to an end here today. And Sherrod receives an ovation from the crowd. His teammates. It is Evan Dietrich Smith who checks in. It looks like at left guard and TJ Lang will kick out the right tackle. No brief surprise to see Tom Bahali line up on whoever is at right tackle. They're going to slow down the clock's not even off the field yet. They're out on the line of scrimmage. There you go. All right, now we are set. 10 2 remaining fourth quarter. Chiefs lead the Packers 12-7. Driver in motion, second and 10 for Green Bay. Two tight end set. The handoff to Ryan Grant. Nothing. Wallace Gilberry in to make the tackle. Kansas City did a good job of, of, of building a wall. If Ryan Grant could just get backside to his left a little bit more, he had some wide open space to make some serious yardage. Good job right there by Kansas City of wrapping him up and getting him down on that line of scrimmage. Third down at 10. at the 35-yard line, Allen Bailey, the rookie third-round pick out of Miami with his first career sack. I, I think you have to kind of adjust what you're doing right now. You're going with five-man protections with just John Kuhn inside. That's Evan Dietrich Smith, who just came in to play the left guard spot, got beat inside. You, you've got to you firm up your protections a little bit here for the Green Bay Packers. You don't want to be releasing everybody downfield. Arenas from the 17. And Arenas takes it out to the 33-yard line. 16 on the return, 47-yard punt. The Kansas City Chiefs get the ball back. They lead by five. 8.50 remaining, fourth quarter in Kansas City. Chiefs will take over at their own 34-yard line, leading the 13-0 Packers 12-7. Well, this defense has benefited from an explosive offense all season long. It's time for them to get a little bit of a, a payback, make a big play here. How about their offense who's been struggling today? The end around to Steve Preston. Preston picks up a first down and more into Packers territory. Ball came loose at the end of the play, but he was already out of bounds. Preston gains 25 yards. Well, it's just some really fundamental basic plays when you talk about an aggressive free flow defense here comes Steve Bresson on the end around and we've seen the end around a couple of times we've seen screen plays the play calls that the Kansas City Chiefs have been running have, have been great you know by the style of what Green Bay plays but they're pretty fundamental plays that this defense should be able to shut down from the 41 on first down Orton fires downfield looking for Preston Tremont Williams on the coverage, no flags. And they've been going after Tremont Williams all day, Darren. Yeah, I know, and, and Tremont Williams is a good player. A pro oh, bowler last year. That is a great release off the line of scrimmage by Steve Breston. Smith was just leaking over there, it looked like. Well, you got to have some recognition there, Tony. You've got Anthony back outside with Dwayne Bowe. We saw this in the first half, too. The thing that makes that successful is it's run quickly. Kyle Orton is up to the line of scrimmage, and it's a quick count. You get the ball outside right away. one yard line 
Charlie Pepper finally made the tackle. McLean, game seven. They've done a nice job with these running backs today. All, all three of them really contributing in this game. Ron McLean, Thomas Jones, Jackie Ballon. Don't forget Dexter McCluster, too. Look at that time of possession. Exactly what Romeo Cornell wanted to achieve. Off the play fake. Orton complete. Down to the four-yard line. Anthony Bent. Kansas City has been very, very good today in field. But when they get down here inside the five-yard line, they have really struggled. Little play action, dragging Anthony back across the field. They're on the five-yard line. And again, so far during the course of this game today, ten plays inside the five-yard line for a grand total of three yards. This is where this Chiefs offense has just hit a roadblock. Thomas Jones. I'll tell you what, Darrell, me and you talked about it on commercial. That, that naked is there. Kyle Lorton, when he came out that right side on that last play, everybody bit on that run inside. Nobody was covering Kyle Lorton. I wouldn't be surprised if they come back with that. It's been one of the plays that's been really effective out in the field for him. You know, yeah. Bootleg and then, you know, or if Kyle decides to just take it on his own. I know you're tight to the end zone, but maybe even a screen here. The screen has been the other good play. Just do a walk-in screen. Three receivers set. Second and goal. From the four. The claim. Takes it down to the one. So the Chiefs once again facing third and goal. As they send in Polk, they send in Battle, an extra blocker in Rodney Hudson. Three tight ends, third and goal from the one. Jackie Battle is in for a Chiefs touchdown. Here's that big formation. You got four big bodies to the right side. This time, they take control of the penetration. They actually pull John Azamoa to the outside. Jackie Battle gets in behind all those big bodies. Runs over Charles Woodson on his way in. Or no, that's a block by LaRon McLean to get him into the end zone. Remember, every scoring play is reviewed. battle with his second touchdown of the season suck up the extra point and with under five minutes remaining here in kansas city the 13-0 green bay packers trail by 12. this is the same play that they ran earlier on the fourth down in the first half when bj raji came through and made a great play got the big bodies on the outside Joe Azamoa, and there's LaRon McLean turning back inside, helping Jackie Battle push across that goal line. Well, the Chiefs score their first touchdown today, only their fourth touchdown of the last seven games. And they now lead the Green Bay Packers. 19-7 in Romeo Cornell's debut as interim head coach. We mentioned he was the defensive coordinator for the Patriots who won 21 consecutive games in 03 and 04. Looking to end the Packers streak at 19. The big thing is though, against an offense as explosive as Green Bay, you've got to finish the game. You've got to play all 60 minutes. Just a little under five minutes remaining in this game. That's plenty of time when you're talking about a team that has the weapons like Green Bay has. This Kansas City defense has to keep playing like they have all game. They've been outstanding this afternoon.
And Green Bay also has three timeouts left, also down. The golf sails through the end zone. So Aaron Rodgers and the Packers will start from their own 20-yard line. They find themselves in a very unfamiliar position after winning 19 consecutive games, including the postseason last year. Well, the amazing thing is they've never trailed in the fourth quarter during this 19-game winning streak. They've trailed the entire fourth quarter here today, and you have to credit everybody in Kansas City. The offense has done what they set out to do. They've controlled the clock, run the ball effectively, kept Aaron Rodgers on the sideline. Their defense has been outstanding. They've been able to get to Aaron Rodgers with just four, allowing seven to drop into coverage and clog those throwing lanes. We've talked about the opponents for this Packers offense all day long, and what a job by the Packers defense. Once again, it is Tamba Holly bringing down Rodgers at the line of scrimmage. And the easy thing today is to talk about the loss of Greg Jennings and the impact it has had on this game. But that's not fair to the secondary of the Kansas City Chiefs. They have done an excellent job in coverage all afternoon. Second sack today for Holly, third for the Chiefs. Catch is made for a first down by Randall Cobb, takes it out to the 37. How ironic, so much talk all week long. When will Mike McCarthy pull his players if the Packers have a big lead? And as you said prior to the game, still one more notch on the checklist. They have not yet clinched home field advantage throughout the playoffs. And the Chiefs have done a terrific job today. As Cobb makes the catch, there is a flag on the far side of the field at the 37-yard line. Oh, going against Green Bay after a big Illegal catch and motion. run. Offense number 87. Five-yard penalty. We play first out. Sloppy. That's on Jordy Nelson, who does not have a catch today. It's his third penalty. It's, I mean, is a guy who everybody thought it was going to be Jordy Nelson was going to help clinch this home field advantage. It, it hasn't been that way this afternoon. You can see as a player, you go through, you make the playoffs, you want to win your division, then you want to get that first round by. The last piece of business is securing home field, and Green Bay can do that with a win this afternoon. Rodgers wrapped up by Holly. Down he goes once again at the 26-yard line. Third sack today for Holly. And Kamba Holly has been a one-man wrecking crew. Watch him here on the outside. Comes back. Wraps up Aaron Rodgers. They what? He has been after him all day. What a motor on this kid. Three sacks today, 12 on the season. Rodgers complete. First catch for Jordy Nelson. Returning to Kansas, grew up in Manhattan, Kansas, attended Kansas State, and Nelson picks up a Packers first down. 22-yard pass play. Rodgers on first down, the screen to Kuhn, and Kuhn has another first down to the Chiefs 41 as we approach three minutes remaining. Gain of 11, Packers with all three of their timeouts trailing by 12. Penalty marker, false start, Packers. False start. Offense number 74. Five yard penalty. First down. The left tackle, Marshall Newhouse. Well, they got to give that to Tom Ali because Tom Ali has been taking it to Marshall Newhouse all day. Ali has tied his career high goose with three sacks today. From the 46, here comes Ali again. Rodgers gets the pass away, and it's caught by Finley. And Jermichael Finley takes it all the way down to the Chiefs' 15-yard line. Gain of 31. And the confidence that this group has to have that, that any situation they can overcome because of how explosive they are on the offense. From the 15, Rodgers to the outside is Nelson. His second catch of this drive. Down to the Kansas City 8. 
Kansas City really not in a prevent right now. They're doing a lot of the same things that they've done throughout the game. They're rushing three, they're rushing four, but they're playing zone coverage behind that. They're not, they were playing cover two, which is two deep safeties, and they were manning up underneath. Now they're playing a lot of zone, Tony. Yeah, but rushing three guys against the banged up offensive line. I'd like to see him rush four, maybe five, and not give Aaron a lot of time in that pocket. Right now he's sitting back there and he's comfortable. And he's finding his receivers downfield. Rogers five for five on this drive. On second down to the end zone. No flags. Pass intended for Tom Crabtree. Travis Daniels on the coverage. Holly slow to get up. Helped up by Gene Steratore. Probably just tired. <laughs> I would be. Yeah, I think that's just somebody that's been <laughs> rushing the passer all afternoon and needs to catch you a little bit of a rest. G lands a helping hand. Third down and three. Rogers moving to his right. A pump fake. Looks to run it in. Aaron Rodgers. With his third rushing touchdown this season. As the Packers reach the end zone for the second time today. Heads up play by Jermichael Finley. Once he realizes that Aaron, Aaron Rodgers has the opportunity to run that in. Just like a little screen like you would in a basketball game. That was like three pumps right there. Everybody was so nervous he was going to throw the ball. No one worried about him. What a drive for Rodgers and the Packers. Crosby the extra point. Nine plays, 80 yards. In two minutes, 49 seconds. So with 2.04 remaining, Packers with all three timeouts. Back to within five. And how key is that right now? And that's a credit to Mike McCarthy and really his whole staff and the team of being very disciplined and not burning timeouts. you got to keep those in your pocket. And we've seen Kansas City have to use them because they've had 12 guys on the field or 10 guys on the field or the clock's running down and they're about ready to take a delay game. The fact that Green Bay has been clean in that area this afternoon allows them to have all three in their pocket, and they don't have to kick onside here if they want to. Exactly. They've got the two-minute warning. They've got all three of their timeouts. They can kick it, play defense, and get that ball back to Aaron Rodgers. That's well, that's right. exactly. we, saw, we saw Goose, the Denver Broncos, last week against Chicago, an onside kick in this situation because they did not have any timeouts remaining. Well, I think one of the key things that Darrell said is they got to play defense, something that they haven't done the second half. They have to come out here and they have to stop this Kansas City run game and pass game. Because right now, Kansas City's been having their way with this defense of the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, but if for Kansas City, don't come out and approach it in a conservative manner. No. You really, your whole game plan this afternoon has been rather conservative with screens and bootlegs. Uh, you know, you're, you're running the ball hard. But, I mean, Green Bay appears to be set up in an onside situation here, which is surprising to me. Here we go, the outside kick by Crosby is out of bounds. Chiefs will take over. There is a flag along the far sideline. Welcome those of you who have just joined us. 204 remaining in Kansas City. Here's referee Gene Steratore. Illegal touching. Kicking team number 87. Illegally touched the football. Harder going 10 yards. We we'll have a five-yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. The Green Bay Packers, who have won 19 consecutive games, dating back to last season as we take a look at the onside kick attempt by Green Bay. That looks well beyond 10 yards to me. I, th I think what happened with Jordy Nelson, maybe Jordy stepped out of bounds. Right. And then was the first person to touch it coming back in. That's also illegal touch. But that was well beyond the 10 yards for an onside kick. Fourth penalty called on Nelson today. Two for offensive pass interference. Kick first down, Kansas City. Mike McCarthy's Packers, 19 straight wins. Did not score in the first half for the first time all season. 
He did take a 7-6 lead in the third quarter on a touchdown pass from Aaron Rodgers to Donald Driver. There's Kyle Orton, his first start as a Chief. And he has thrown for 299 yards. The Chiefs finally scored their first touchdown moments ago after they were held the four field goals in Romeo Cordell's debut as interim head coach here in Kansas City. And they have done a fantastic job executing the game plan that Romeo Cordell and his staff practiced all week. Packers have all three of their timeouts plus the two-minute warning. Here's Thomas Jones who takes it out to midfield. Gain of six. So with under two minutes remaining in Kansas City, the Packers' undefeated season is in jeopardy. Today. Aaron Rodgers can only watch for the moment with his defense on the field and the Packers trailing the Chiefs by five. A minute 56 remaining in Kansas City. We welcome those of you who have just joined us as Thomas Jones picks up a Chiefs first down with a minute 47 remaining. The Packers use their first timeout. Well, let's go back to earlier in the fourth quarter and show you a play that has an impact on this because it makes the Packers score a touchdown. Remember Leonard Pope on the big catch and run? Watch as he changes hands. He loses that ball. I thought his foot was down and out of bounds as he fumbled it through, but that should be a touchback, and the ball should go to Green Bay. Now, Mike McCarthy thought about it, but it looks like he got he got to that a little bit too late. Mike Pereira, what do you, uh, what do you think about that? I'll tell you, I watched the play from here, and when you stop it, I think the ball's out of the left hand just before the ball, um, before uh, uh, just, the foot's not down before the ball is out. So to me, I think it's a touchback because the ball lands in the end zone. So therefore, you play through the ruling of the runner being out of bounds, and then you give a touchback on the play. All right, thanks, Mike. On first down, taken inside the 40-yard line by Jackie Battle. Who scored a touchdown earlier in this fourth quarter to give the Chiefs a 19-7 lead and Mike McCarthy uses his second timeout. The reason we go back and clean that up for you is because right now at 19-14, at you know, that would have made it 16-14. Go back and recap the Kansas City Chiefs. They've moved the ball up and down the field pretty well this afternoon, but have been stymied once they've gotten down by the five-yard line. Green Bay comes right back, gets a touchdown of their own but they don't execute the onside kick after the touchdown. So with 2.04 remaining, Kansas City gets the ball back and has just been pounding it at this Green Bay defense like they have all afternoon. Man, I tell you what, this, that was amazing to me how they're just running the ball right down this Green Bay defense throat. On the edge, Goose, they got everything sealed. It's unbelievable. Jackie Battle picks That's up it. a first down, and that will do it. Packers with only one timeout remaining. A new set of downs for the Chiefs. I mean, they have been on the perimeter all afternoon today. And here, the most critical part of the game, Green Bay is not making the adjustments, and Kansas City's run game has gotten on the edge in two critical snaps here to close this game out. So Battle picks up a huge first down. Packers use their final timeout with a minute 34 remaining. The Chiefs will be able to run out the clock. Packers have trailed for over 55 minutes. Coming into this game, they trailed for only 103 minutes all season. Kyle Orton hitting 10 different receivers in his first start as a Chief. Romeo Cornell takes over as the interim head coach on Monday, and he said his first decision was to make a change at the quarterback position. And a Gatorade bath for Cornell, who was a huge part of that 21-game win streak by the New England Patriots back in 2003 and 2004. He was the defensive coordinator on that Patriots club that won a record 21 consecutive games, and his Chiefs will end the Packers' streak at 19 two games shy of New England. Yeah, one of the big shockers this season, and you can have a game plan coming in on a Sunday afternoon, but to go out and execute it and have faith in it, because as this game started, Kansas City was doing everything that Romeo Cornell and his staff wanted them to do. They were controlling the clock, running the football, keeping Aaron Rodgers and that offense on the bench, but they weren't converting. They were kicking field goals. They missed on a fourth down inside the five-yard line. 
and Green Bay's offense never really got into sync this afternoon. And it's not just because Greg Jennings is not in the lineup today. This Kansas City defense played outstanding. They covered all those receivers down the field. Tamba Hali had a monster day pressure on the quarterback. The 72 Dolphins can exhale. <laughs> The Green Bay Packers 19 game win streak comes to an end. Packers are now 13 and 1. The Kansas City Chiefs in Romeo Cornell's debut as interim head coach Kyle Orton's first start as a Chief and Kansas City wins it 19 to 14. Now there's unfinished business for the Green Bay Packers. They still have not secured home field a win today would have done that they can wait on a san francisco loss later today but they've still got work to do to close out this season if they want to have every game come through lambeau field they've still got to win one more game or have san francisco lose 299 yards in the air for kyle orton chiefs now six and eight as they defeat the packers by five. First Green Bay loss since last December 19th, a year ago tomorrow. We'll return to Kansas City in a moment.